Right, well, good evening everybody. Uh, finally the sun just went down there, over here in the northeast. It's uh, just turned 6 o'clock, it's been an absolutely fantastic day. Uh, I know I've been uh, I've been a miss, or I hope I've been a miss, the last fortnight, but um, circumstances out of my control. It's been a really hectic fortnight for me the last fortnight. I've had doctor's appointments, I've had hospital appointments, um, trying to get my leg uh, back in good order, but um, I'm getting there eventually. Um, I had my birthday last week, my 65th, so that was my retirement date. Uh, once again, thanks to all the Facebook friends for all our wishes. I uh, had a great day. So this week it's all about getting caught up with um, jobs that I must plod on with over the next week or two. It's, uh, we're getting to the end of March now. Uh, the bedding has been absolutely romping up in the last two days with the... Um, with the warm weather we've had. But what I did manage to do over the weekend, I managed to get uh, most of our bedding plants, well spring bedding, I've got most of them put outside. So I'll just give you I'll give you a quick look around the garden, what I've been doing this afternoon. Um, as I say, I'm, for the new subscribers, I'll, uh, I'll let you know all. Uh, and of course what I started with was uh, the spring pansy. Now what I did with these, I overwatered, overwintered these in the, in the cold polytunnel. Whereas normally you would be planting them out around about the September, October time. But um, mine was still a bit small, so I thought I'd overwinter them in the, um, in the cold greenhouse, in the cold polytunnels, and they're absolutely fantastic. The wife loves them, so we've managed to get all the, get all the baskets filled up, and uh, at the moment we're getting a fantastic show of daffodils. Uh, really nice, coming on really well, well pleased with them. Uh, like I say, all the baskets are all filled up. So the wife's over the moon, and that's what it's all about. It's uh, keeping the ladies of the house happy. It's, uh, that's all the baskets done. And they will last right up until June. Of course, I'll be emptying my baskets out in June, and then the spring bedding, the summer bedding, will go in in the June. Uh, as I say, I'm getting a fantastic show of the, the dwarf duffs. Hyacinths are all through. Really nice. The grape hyacinth. Uh, I have managed to get a few of the, the bedding plants that I brought down. And of course, the, the pot marigolds. I put uh, different spots of pop marigolds. I put lupins in, lupins in over there, over at the back end, because they're going to grow pretty high. So I like to have the borders well stocked with their uh, perennials. But yeah, it's been a busy few days. But um, hopefully we'll get, we'll get caught up again. So we'll just get ourselves back in the greenhouse. It's, uh, as I say, the sun just went down there, so it's, uh, it's turning a little bit chilly there now. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to stop the camera for the time being. Oh no, I'll just let it let it roll on in there, and hopefully I'll pick the right spot. Um, as I say, it's been a, it's been a busy couple of weeks for us. I've um, I've been plodding on, trying to get little bits and pieces done. Um, how are we getting on with the Spanish tomatoes, everybody? Well, uh, there's there's the first ones of mine. Now I do two or three zones. Uh, now these ones I just saw down here, and just the, the cool heat. It was only 50, 55 in here. Some days it's shut up the temperature, but there's nothing wrong with throwing open the door, opening the vent, and letting the fresh air through. And that's the first of my Spanish. Now they'll stop in their pots for at least another week. The roots are just starting to come through there. I'm never in a hurry to pot tomatoes up. Never in a hurry. As I say, a good sign of a good tomato is always have the, the seedling leaves on. If the seedling leaves are there, you know they haven't had any check, and that they're growing away nice and strong the way they should be. Now I'll probably pot that one up. It's uh, either a two litre rose pot, um, it's uh, <coughs> a two litre rose pot, and then grow them on from there, and uh, hopefully they'll get a nice, just nice sized tomatoes. There's my next lot, and they've just, they just been pricked off last week, uh, and these are the American ones, just in little square pots. Perfect. And once again, there's me, the Spanish, I made another sewn of Spanish just last week and they're, they're through and they've just been potted off and what I also did up the allotment was made a cold zone and they just started coming through the ones uh, I sold cold up there but fantastic um, the main zone times this week I've got to get cracking um, I'm going to start on the sweet corn uh, now there's my sweet corn incredible which I grow every year and then of course I've got sent up some peaches and cream from um, Dean Roberts on the back garden veg plot. Thanks again, Dean. 
Now I will be starting off my first ones, the incredible. Um, I've got a little space I can put some of them in, but the main ones, the main crop, um, I'm going to use a piece of cream and I'm going to grow them with the Three Sisters Challenge. And alongside of them, I'm going to grow the pea alderman, which are a good six foot pea. Now I'll, I'll sow them two or three to a small cup about three weeks prior to the sweet corn being planted. So what we'll have, we'll, you'll have a nice little plant, a nice little pot of peas to plant alongside the sweet corn. Now I'm never in a hurry to plant the sweet corn. Um, not in this time anyway, March. April is fine for me. Always, up north here it's really cold and of course as I've always said in, your, um, in previous posts, getting your timing right is, uh, is everything. Now my bottom polytunnel at the moment is filled with potatoes, uh, at the first earliest. Now they'll not come out until the end of May. So I've got from now until the end of May to plant my sweet corn, which I'll get into nice sized pots. Um, I'll hopefully, if I can find one, a 9 centimetre pot like that, I'll hopefully have a nice big sweet corn grown in there by the end of May. So I've got April and May, I've got eight weeks now to think about that. So the second week in May will be fine for the sweet corn. Yeah, the second week of April will be fine for the sweet corn, so that gives them six weeks uh, to get potted off from the trays. Um, little multi cell trays that I normally start them off in. I'll start them off in them and then I'll repot them in either 9 centimetre or 12 centimetre, depending on how big they grow. Yeah, how fast they grow. Depends on the temperature, depends on, on what weather you're getting. You might get a cold April. But if you get a nice, big, strong plant, um, I'll be potting them off into a bigger pot. I'm never shy about potting sweet corn off. I always like the roots in a nice deep pot. And hopefully by the end of May, when the teas come out, the sweet corn will go in. And what I'll have, I'll have some nice peas grown in the cup, just to plant right alongside the sweet corn. And then a week prior to that, the watermelons will go in. So we've got three crops grown in one space. Uh, the watermelons or marrows, courgettes, grow whatever you want, they'll grow on the bottom, they'll they'll see they'll cover the whole seed bed, the whole planting bed, keep it nice and cool. The leaves will cover everything off, keep it nice and nice and moist, and of course you'll get a fruit off them. Your beans will grow up beside the sweet corn. Your beans will feed the sweet corn because the nitrogen fixes for the soil and your sweet corn will benefit and uh, as I say, you should end up with three crops in one. But um, I'll start all this off in about four weeks' time. So if you want to follow us in the Three Sisters Challenge, and as I say, we're up north here, so we're going by what we're. If you're, if you're down south, you can sow a week, two, three weeks earlier than what we do up north. If you've got the room, by all means, sow now. But the way I like to sow, I like to sow when I've got the space. Once my greenhouse is empty, I like to have me. The plants ready to go in, so it's all about timing. So that's them um, three sorted. Um, as I say, I've been really busy with tomatoes. Uh, croissants is another one. I've been busy potting up croissants. These are the cuttings that I took uh, four, five, six weeks ago, and they're all nicely rooted. I've been busy trying to get different pots done every day, and uh, of course I'm I'm restricted to what I can carry and what I can't carry. We're still having the frame on my leg. Um, I'm still relying on friends to give us left something down in the garden, so you know that's uh, that's great. What I did get the other day, um, one of the friends come down from the allotment and uh, he had been pruning back a black Hamburg grape. So I was lucky enough just to catch him, and uh, of course, as he was pruning off, he says, "What can I do with these?" Well, you can root them off, and I showed him how to root them, and uh, so he gave us half a dozen pieces of. The stick that he had cut off, and lo and behold, they've been in a fortnight, and there's nice big fat buds grown already. So, that's a black hamburg I've got. My grapes, the yellow ones, are grown away well up the allotment. I've got plenty of buds on them, so I know I had a few people ask for, uh, for a grapevine last year. Um, no doubt, once they're well rooted, I'll be able to send you one out. Uh, maybe it's middle of summer, but uh, we'll get, them, get a nice root ball on them first, and I'll get them sent out here, and uh, you can get them planted out for the next year. But uh, for the time being, I'm going to plod on because I've got tons and tons of bedding plants. There's a Nicotiana, and they're absolutely gorgeous plants. And they're uh, just grown in a small tree. 
they'll put off great. Two, three, four little clumps in a multi cell tray, and they, they'll be fantastic. All our uraniums are through. Um, I've just finished the last of the geraniums. They're all potted up now. I've got about five trays of them. I've went through all three or four trays of these. I've done all the geraniums, all the busy lizzies. I'm nearly finished my libidia. That's just about finished off. Um, I've got still got half a tray of uh, cineraria. I'm still to pot up. I've gotten half a tray of that done. Um, I keep jumping from different trays. I shouldn't. I should just plot on, get one tray done, and put it down, and uh, get away with it. Tomorrow as well. This is my second sword, and uh, the tumbler, tomato tumbler. Now we'll stop in there for about another week. They're looking fine. They're just second leaves. They're just starting to come off. As I say, I'm never in a hurry to prick off at the first leaf stage. I always think my tomatoes to get a good sized root in them first before I even start thinking about disturbing them. I know a lot of people say, oh, you've got to prick off at the second leaf stage. It's not necessary. You know, if you've got a good compost and they're nice and moist, they're well fed, they'll sharp tell if they're not getting fed because they'll, they'll start yellowing off the leaves. Um, if they're healthy enough, just leave them. Get a good root ball on them first before you decide to shift them. Um, once again, there's another pot of hillbilly. They've just been put in four days ago and they're through already. And they just in a, a ordinary propagator, just a plastic top over. And it's only the temperature in here now is 59, which is perfect for me. Mine, it was red hot before when the sun was out. But my main door was open, the vent was open. And the fresh air was just blown straight through. But uh, yeah, that's the way I like it. I like it nice and cool. Chilies, peppers, uh, well, they're grown away quite nice. And these are the yellow bell peppers. I've got some long jaw chilies at the back, which I've got off Dean Hood. And they're just nice size for me. Not too big. You see, and there's the long jaw chilies. Just grown away nice and slowly. There's enough heat in here just to keep them ticking over. Nothing to force them on. Once the weather warms up, they'll show up catch up. You've got a nice big plant. Um, they'll be potted off in about a fortnight's time. Well, that's only in, in the end of April. And then they go right through April. And I, I hate planting anything out any earlier than middle of May. Or even June up here in the final pot. So by then I'm going to have a nice big plant uh, to pot up. But yeah, quite happy with things are growing down here. So what we're going to do tomorrow, we're going to pot up the plot. And... Um, as I say, for the new subscribers, thanks again. Uh, I'm down here at home. I'm in a little 6x6, which I do a lot of the potting off. I do a lot of me starting off down here. And uh, I transfer most of it up to the garden by our friends and cars and uh, barrows uh, when I get a chance. But uh, for the time being, we'll, uh, we'll call it a night because the sun just went down there. And actually, you can feel the temperature just uh, dropping. It started off in here uh, this morning at about uh, 70 until I opened the doors. And as I say, it's down to 59 there now, so I'm quite happy with that. And I'm hoping the temperature is just going to keep it at 55 through the night. I'll be well chuffed. Um, but what we'll do, we'll get up the plot tomorrow and we'll get cracking. Loads to do up there. Uh, loads to show you. And um, loads of seeds to start putting in. But the, the cabbage, the collie, the sprouts are all romping away. I've got to shift them into a cold polytunnel tomorrow. But I'll, I'll explain all that tomorrow when we're on the plot, OK? So for the time being, good night for now, and I'll see you in the morning up the plot. Right, well, good afternoon, everybody. i uh, managed to get up the plot this afternoon before the, the worst of the weather hits were. As I've seen uh, in the early part of the video, I want to get up here and try and start so some of the summer bedding out, some of the uh, spring bedding that I've been doing. But, uh, unfortunately, uh, with um, friends and family turning up, one of the jobs I wanted to do this weekend, I couldn't get done, which is in between Japanese onions. I'll get me my first rows of, of uh, summer carrots sown, and of course, me to both sides of the trench, I'll put a row of, of parsnips. I was still not too late for the parsnips. It's only the 1st of April today, so maybe it's the weekend we'll get cracking on them and we'll get them parsnips in. That's the job I must get done, so we can, uh, we can leave that for the time being. And another job was to get these uh, get these raspberries sorted out. I think just there uh, where the tips are, they're all in growth now, 
so it's just cut these back so they're nice and neat get them well tied in check all the, check all the, all the tires make sure they're, they're nice and strong get ready for the summer they've had, they've had a good coating of horse manure and uh, before the horse manure went on they had a good uh, sprinkling of sulfur to, sulfur to potash so yeah they're doing fine I'm, I'm pleased with them as you see all the way down the beds uh, we've got all the new canes growing so I'm over the moon with them the spring bedding I was on about uh, I've managed to get a lot of the stuff out of the, the top greenhouses the uh, Zanadeshas they're out now but um, the spring bedding's starting to go now I've had a few family and friends come up and pick theirs up I've got the Sweet William these are Delphiniums, they've got to go out the Bellis Daisies, I'm taking mine down this afternoon mine and Rogers I've managed to get all my baskets done down home so now's the time to get my Bellis Daisies in my wallflowers and of course the Sweet Williams I've got some Californian poppies that I've all grown over the winter and of course these, if you want to grow these they're quite easy to grow and they're great for self-seeding so they'll go in of course the hostas, plenty of hostas they're grown away nicely now these are the ones if you go back in my video on last year uh, dividing stock um, that's how I divided all the plants up and I've got, uh, I've got dozens dozens of nice new plants from the, from the one crown well, it's the old pansies. These were overgrown in the uh, in the bottom polytunnel this year. As I say, I didn't have time to, to sow them last year, so I made a late a late sown and uh, I overwintered them in the polytunnel, and absolutely fantastic. So I've just planted mine out in the in the hanger baskets, and uh, as I say, the only thing I've got left to go in is my wallflowers. I'm going to take some wallflowers down the night, get them planted in, and of course I put them, the pot marigolds in. Of course, some of them are already in flower. Absolutely gorgeous. So if you want these for the hoverflies and that, you can plant these around your tomatoes or you can plant them, you know, close to the greenhouse where it's, it's going to attract the hoverflies and that. And uh, especially pollinating insects and of course that's what it's all about. It's getting a, getting a good day insects down to give you a hand in the garden. Yeah, Roger's been really busy. He's getting uh, the first or three beds all turned over. And of course what I had on there is a good uh, helping of uh, horse manure. He's, uh, he's managed to turn all these in, and uh, this one here, we've got um, we've got main crop paties, but I'm, I'm holding off for another week or two because of what you were about to bad weather this week. So I'm, I'm not going to do this until a fortnight's time, middle of April. I'll be fine for me, I'll be happy. I've got some seeds to go in there, I've got um, the main crop paties, red ones in there, and white ones over in the far end, so they're earmarked. All they need done is just finishing off at the bottom here. The leaves need tipping out and a bit more back raking on top of it just to level the beds out. Well chuffed with that. Right, so we'll get ourselves into the, into the bottom polytunnel. As you see, I've still got bags of hops out there, but I'm going to use, use that for my first mix of the tomatoes. I've got my uh, me first big Spanish tomatoes I'm going to need planting out in, uh, in a week or two time, so I need them. And these are these are the first of our strawberries that we brought in, and uh, as I say, they're absolutely fantastic. They're really romping away. I'm, I'm over the moon with them. Really growing strong. That's what early potatoes they're in. Uh, they're growing pretty strong. I'm quite pleased with them. I'm going to, have to put the weepy hose on tomorrow because I want to give the give the beds a really good soaking. So we'll get them in. And of course, once these come out, uh, this is where the sweet corn's going to go. Uh, well, garlics that were brought in the other week, and they, they, they're just flourishing there now. These are the ones that were left in the pots. Instead of putting them in the beds like I normally do, I thought I'd leave three bulbs in a pot, and they, they're growing away really strong. These are not the big ones. The big ones are, um, have gone into the, the far greenhouse in the, the actual bed itself. So I'm pleased with that. But they, yeah, they're growing away great. Strawberries are lovely and clean. There's the odd leaf just dying back on it, but they're. Uh, it's an easy job just to go around and uh, pull them off any dead leaves, but the rest of them are as lovely and green, nice and fresh. And of course, there's the flowers on them there now. Now these had a good soaking of garlic only a fortnight ago, and they uh, certainly done the job because they're nice and clean. Uh, these are our, um, our brassicas, which are uh, I potted off a couple of weeks ago. They're now in the cold polytunnel. As I say, there's a mesh door there, so there's plenty of fresh air blowing straight through. And it's keeping them nice and cool. I've just brought these out of the greenhouse. And uh, they're going to sit here for another four weeks now. Just until, as I explained before, once these little pots are full of root. Uh, sometimes to the point of being root bound. I'll be well chuffed with that. 
and then they go in the garden and you get no problem whatsoever for planting out. At the moment I'm uh, it's like a bit like a little lumber yard in here. Um, We've got two or three big jobs to do this summer. It's uh, one being the, the the old sheds where I went through, where my foot went through. That's got to have a whole new roof on, so that's what the timber's for. Uh, unfortunately, I'll not be climbing up on top. I've been banned from climbing for a year, here yeah, for life, off the wife, so um, that's what's happening. These are our, uh, our own marigolds, as, it, as you can see. They're all popping through it, and they're just in a the cold greenhouse here. No heat whatsoever. Uh, Cracker Jack, they've run through. Them ones will be going giving away for fr friends and family, the Cracker Jack ones, because they're quite a tall variety of them. Um, and that's what I do want planting amongst the tomatoes. I like my own, which are the um, the small ones. Uh, I can't, cannot remember the name of it now. Um, little petite ones, but they grow smashing in amongst the, um, in amongst the tomatoes. Uh, as they, cabbages, collies, sprouts, all in here now. It's nice and cool. Well chuffed with it. Yep, and them strawberries are just fantastic. I love them. Yeah, they're nice and clean. Doing really well. Well chuffed with that. So that's the bottom tunnel. Uh, the big tunnel now, with the first tunnel, where the melon house is, it's absolutely packed out. Cannot move in it. And they're uh, still managing to hobble along. Now we've just had the first of our spring cabbage this weekend. Uh, and of course this is a Duncan, and absolutely beautiful. Lovely cabbage. We had two for dinner and I was over the moon with it. And of course, the wife loves the uh, the first of the spring greens. There's different ones. It's a ball, ball type. There's three different types of, um, of cabbage. There's uh, Wheeler's Imperial at the back. And there's some, um, the, the spring ball cabbage hero. And there's, uh, there's a Duncan. There's three different kinds that we like to use. But um, all of them are growing away really well. It's a lovely big head one. That one over there, it's absolutely fantastic. That's going to go for me dinner tomorrow. Uh, well, third year strawberries out the back there. As I say, the ones in the bottom tunnel are our first ones. These are our third years, and of course, these are our second years in the green pots over the back there. And we'll always have uh, three three lots of strawberries and one outside, that's four lots. Um, and then a, a lot in the top tunnel, top greenhouse. So that gives us uh, five, five lots of strawberries. Which you'll see we're through right from the April until the, the middle of July. Right, as you can see, the melon house is absolutely chocker. I've just finished putting off my geraniums, they're done, the busy lizzie are done. A uh, few begonias, they're finished off now. <coughs> what I have to do this weekend is a must, is get stuck in my Swan River daisy. Now, as I've said, I've showed you how I grow mine. I grow them in, in, just in trees and I like to put them in rows. It, why I put them in rows, it makes them a hell of a lot easier when you start pricking them off into little bunches. Uh, just take your time, you can just work your way through the rows, and uh, not so much disturbance to the to the roots. But uh, yeah, they're just a nice size for me now, so I'll start putting them off next week. As I say, I'm not, I'm never in a hurry to pot them, um, to pop my stuff up, uh, like some labelia and that. They're just in little clumps all the way through. The zinnias, now the zinnias have been a little bit poor this year, I don't know why. Um, I've kept a good check on them, they've been there. Uh, the germination's been pretty poor on them. But uh, the ones that are coming through, they're, they're pretty strong. They're a funny plant to grow, they don't like being disturbed. They're potted off, so that's why I grow them in the multi-cell trays. And then once once they're filled with fruit, I just take them out and put, put them in the river pot and they're growing quite well. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get quite a few of them. This is the um, all the perennials that I sowed. It's hollyhocks, um, there's verbena, there's aquilegia, that's all the aquilegia coming through there. I've already sown some hollyhocks uh, in, a, in the top tunnel there. I've, I've gotten a couple of pots of them sown, so I'll have to crack on with them. As you can see down in the bottom here, the dahlias. Now, I sow them in full trays. And as I say, I'm never, never in a hurry to pot these off. I like, I like the, the, see the roots come out the bottom first, and then just gently ease them out, and you get a nice root on the on the actual daily itself before I start potting them off. But there's two full trays of them, and there's at least 40, 50 in a tray there, so I'm chuffed with them. And of course, that's the bedding dahlias. Here's another tray of Swan River Daisy. Um, that's the palm. I don't know if anybody's got a palm. 
um, are quite easy to take cuttings from. You just get an old bit of the trunk, uh, make a straight cut on the bottom and then start to cut on the top. Trim it back all the leaves and put a bit of the palm in, a bit of the cane, and these are root from the bottom. Uh, quite easy to grow, uh, as I say. There should be some croissants in here. Yeah, I've just taken another load of croissants and they're in there. They're the pink ones. They don't uh, just give them a little spray every night. And of course, when you come up on the top rows here, we've got uh, we've got webs, wonderful. We've got stock and we've got lupin. So these definitely need to be potted off this weekend. And the tomato as well. It's just never. These are the cool ones, by the way. If you remember me sowing them a couple of weeks ago on the video, and I put them all in. Yeah, they are, and just so cold, no heat whatsoever. But these are in the melon house. It's uh, it's about next to five degrees in here than where it is outside in the big tunnel. So all I had on here was a plastic dome, and of course once I come through, I take the dome off and let them thicken up. And they're in little multi-cell trays, so I'm never in a hurry to put these up. I let them let them get the, get the, the squares filled with roots first uh, before I put them up. Well chuffed for them. Uh, I've got there. Uh, but four or five different varieties here. I've got the plum, the Spanish plum, I've got the giant Spanish there, and I think they're, they're celeric. Yep, they're just coming through there. And of course, I've got um, more tomatoes here, more Spanish plum, more American. Yelza Craig. Now, these Yelza Craig are the ones, my last ones I've sown, and they're just popping through there now. Um, the Alicante and the Money Maker. I like to grow these cold as well because these are going to go into a cold greenhouse in the beginning of May. So I'm, I'm well chuffed for them, they're, they're just shooting away. I have got some nice big tomatoes down home but they've been grown just in the greenhouse at home. Only 50, 55 and they're just, I think it's quite, quite. well this is a melon house and you can see up in here, it's, uh, it's 60, 61 in here. Cold greenhouse, middle of March or the end of March, beginning of April, you wouldn't credit. It takes all the time to get a temperature with the heater on. As I say, there's no heat in here whatsoever. I have one window open in there, which is that end one there, and that uh, it keeps it heating right through the night. Very rarely it drops to 45 through the night, so I'm, I'm well chuffed with that. So that's that one. All we've got left now, we'll pop in if we've got time. We'll pop into the um, into the greenhouse. As I say, the, uh, everything's grown away really well. Been doing a little bit of cleaning in the shed, trying to get this place sorted out because next year I'm going to have heat on in here. Build myself a fair, a good damn, um, a good heating system. Oh, there's me three large onions. Um, well chuffed with them. Going away really strong. I'm going to actually going to plant these in the top greenhouse at the weekend because the roots are well full there now through the bottom. So I'm going to plant them out at the weekend up the top of the greenhouse here. Yeah, that's me dahlias, that's me big show dahlias. Now I haven't started cutting on these yet, I should have this weekend, but I've had too much to do. So I'm going to crack on with that this weekend, strip that down, I should get at least a dozen off there. Um, they're all coming, slowly, but these are the big giant ones. Uh, Brian Turfel, Moat Place, Alva Supreme, um, Moat Park, is another good one. Amari Gold, which is a beautiful one, big dinner plate sized uh, dahlias is. But these are all my favourites. And of course the onions I brought up last week, I was showing you. And these have been just in there. The cold greenhouse here, there's a little bit of heat on here, not much. It's just keeping these dahlias um, frost free, that's all. And the onions, well look at them, they're absolutely beautiful. These are the Ilsa Craig. And they've been brought up just nice and cool. The roots are through the bottom there now, so I'll pot them up this weekend at a 9 centimetre pot. And they'll stop on these benches now till uh, at least the middle of May. So a nine centimetre pot will be fine for them. Uh, one thing I must get done, my gladiolis are in there. I'll have to get them gladiolis out, these big bulbs, and get them there. Uh, get them potted up into a tray of sand, uh, nice sharp sand, and then get them grown away nicely. There's all my croissant cuttings that I was doing last week in the other video. These are the first ones, and they're all potted up. They're grown away really well now, really chuffed for them. These strong plants, Max Riley. Oh, it's one of my favourites. Um, Alison Pierce. That's another good one. Liverpool Festival. Um, oh, quite a few of them there. I'm well chuffed for them. But there's, there's plants everywhere. I'm going to have to have a good sort out. 
and try and make ourselves some room. And of course, these are the um, Paul Rochester, the Giants. These has been sitting there. These are going to go into the top greenhouse next week where it's nice and cold. No heat whatsoever. And they're lovely and clean. Absolutely beautiful. I get these to spray garlic the other day. Soapy water and garlic and they're perfect. Not a scratch on them. No rust or anything. Well chuffed with them. And he'll just go and sit in the top greenhouse for another couple of weeks yet. They've just been potted up into, into the big um, the big buckets. So they'll be sitting in there until at least the middle of May before they go out into the garden. Uh, once again, a spring carriage. These are the hero. The wrong ones. And they're just starting to heart up. There now. Beautiful. Uh, these are the large garlics. Roger planted all these out last weekend. And of course these are the elephant garlics. I like these I I like these along the side of the um, along the side of the beds, and it, they'll grow really strong there now. The reason we bring them inside is to stop the um, is to stop the rust, and uh, they should stay nice and clean now. All they've had is a little bit of feed on them, a little bit of nitro choke, but the bed was uh, cleaned out with the cabbages first, and then we sprinkled a little bit of nitro choke along, and uh, that's done the trick. I come away nice and slow, and I'm well pleased with that. And of course here once again is what last well last lot of baskets that were brought inside. Now these have only been in since um since February and already you can see the difference between these and the ones down the bottom there. They're starting to get their fruit bunches on there. No doubt in a couple of weeks time we'll get the flowers, but these will be a few weeks behind them ones. And these are the white strawberries. So I'm uh, I'm dying to see how these turn out. I'll be over the moon with that. But yeah, but, um, I'm pleased with things I've grown here to see where we're starting to get some crops now from the from the gardens. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pop in, get some mixed meat up, and I want to get started on the sweet corn. So I'm going to I'm going to make the first day uh, of the sweet corn. Okay. Right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, once I get myself dried off, I've been attempting to water most of the seedling trees in the uh, in the melon house there. And, uh, it's just Absolutely weird the weather here in the northeast. We had pouring rain, sleet snow yesterday. We had a um, bit of snow this morning, hailstone, uh, heavy rain, and now the sun change come out and the winds just pick up. You just uh, you don't know what's going to be from one day to the next. So you know, rather be prepared for everything, and then uh, that way you don't lose anything. As I've been saying on my Facebook page last couple of nights, just um, try not to pump your plants. Um, keep them snug by all means, and uh, by all means these are the best things since sliced bread. Just an ordinary plastic crush cut cover, and uh, I use these for a lot of my seed trays. Um, in the cold greenhouse, in the melon house, it's, um, it's actually 61 degrees in here this afternoon, and it's in here it's 60 degrees, but there is a little paraffin heat underneath for the keeping the leeks and the onions warm. I've also got the daily tubers in here, which I like to keep a little bit of heat on. Because um, I, I will be starting to take cuttings this week off them, um, that must. At the moment, I'm trying to get them um, shot of leeks, I'm trying to get shot of onions. Uh, if you remember, four and eight years ago, I was showing you the, the Spanish onions um, that I grow every year. Well, there they are again. I've potted them up in the pots, and lo and behold, they're going to they're gonna need potting off again and, uh, in a couple of weeks' time. So, what I've been concentrating on today is uh, the Elta Craig, and there we are. And these we just started off 50, 55 down home, cold seed, uh, not too much heat, and uh, as I say, now we're into the beginning of April, absolutely fantastic, lovely looking plants. Um, and all I'll be getting now, I'll be potting them up in the, in the black bags, I like to use these, um, the little pots, uh, the little uh, plastic, um, plastic bags, I use these quite a lot for uh, onions and leeks, they're cheap enough to buy. Um, as I say, I'll be using them for the majority of my onions. As, as you can see, I've started putting some of the onions off and they're up into their bags. <coughs> All these now, need now is a good soaking. And of course, as I do with uh, most of leeks and onions, I give them a root boost. And this is just a little bit of microcosal. One of the lads was asking the other night um, where I got mine from. Well, you can go online and just type in microcosal and you get there. Uh, you get up in um, different uh, varieties will come up. But that's the ones I use. I use a dragonfly, and uh, for a uh, for a kilo, it's uh, nine fifty. Oh, that's like excellent. I've done um, dozens of leeks, and I've done dozens of onions, and I've still got quite a little bit in the bottom here. 
I'll finish off the last meal at Craig, and no doubt I'll still have enough left just to put a drop in the bottoms when I do the Spanish onions next week. But uh, yeah, fantastic. I'm over the moon with that. As I say, they're nice, they're nice looking onions. Um, and I like the way the colour pots are full of root in the bottom. Nice and white. No disease whatsoever. Lovely and clean. We used to be getting potted off into here, and now with the only been the first week of April, we've got uh, three, we've got four weeks yet. Um, and a week into May, so that's five weeks, they're going to be sitting in these bags. So if I have to give a bit of additional feed, you know, that's quite alright. I can uh, use a little bit of uh, a little bit of seaweed fertiliser that's in the barrels. Um, there's some of the BLF still down there. That's got plenty of nitrates in. I can give them a drink of that. Um, I try to keep away from the chemicals as much as I can. Um, as you'll know in me, the last of my videos. Um, I don't like using too many chemicals. But if I can get away with just them um, feeding naturally, I will do. Uh, one of my main jobs this week, uh, as I pointed out in the beginning of the video, was to, uh, was to tackle the sweet corn. Now, I don't usually start my sweet corn off until the second week in April, but uh, I, the packet what I have getting, the incredible, I grow these most years, uh, they're, they're quite a good um, a quite a good sweet corn, and of course I've got the big bulk corn, uh, which I'm going to use for the main crop, uh, the peaches and cream from uh, Dean Roberts. Dean Roberts once again on the, on the garden veg plot, well this is how I do mine, Dean, if you're going to follow it closely, I don't know if you've already sown your sweet corn, but um, as I say, I like to use, leave mine till about the second week in April. But what I'm going to do today, I'm going to start sewing off a few of these, because I'm going to try, if the wind drops a bit, I'm going to try um, sewing some of these outside. I've never grown them outside before. I've always, had, I've always grown them in my polytunnels, and I've had fantastic crops. But uh, what I'm going to do this year, I'm going to have my main crop in the polytunnel, but I'm going to start um, a crop off outside, uh, just in one of the big barrels, a couple of posts on either corner, and uh, wrapping a polythene around, and hopefully that'll keep the. Uh, we're up the northeast here, we can get some uh, some terrible wind, some cold days, cold nights, and uh, I think the sweet corn will struggle to grow on the outside. But I'm going to try them this year anyway for a, for a change. So this is my method, Dean. Um, my multi purpose compost with my compost in, mixed in, plenty of sharp sand, so it's a really good free draining mixture. Now these have been pre soaked. I never water above when I put sweet corn in. The uh, reason being that easy to rot off. Uh, if you've got cold compost, my compost is always inside so it's nice and warm. If you've got cold, wet compost, you've got, you've got more of a chance of your seed rotting off in that than what you have if you just... Um, if you've got a nice warm compost, and they say, water out of the barrel, of course, it's nice and warm. It's fresh water, that. So, and all I like to do is just to put my finger in, well, you know the depth, inch, half inch, to three quarters of an inch. Uh, poke them in, as I say, I pre water these trays, and once again, just nail deep. And there we have it. Fantastic. Are you all ready? And of course, the sweet corn seed, quite easy to handle, these big seeds. And all I like to do is just plop one into the holes. One in each one, one in each bit. I love using these multi purpose um, seed trays, the multi cell ones, because I think you get a much better plant. They're not getting disturbed, especially when you have to repot them. Now, mine will be repotted twice, the main crop ones. The main crop ones will get started off on these, and then I'll move on to a, a bigger pot. When they come out with the multi cell trays, I'll put them in a, a 9 cm square pot. And then when they come out with a 9 cm pot, I'll put them in a bigger pot, a black pot, which uh, unfortunately I haven't got any sitting around, which is unusual for me. Uh, I can use these, I can use the, le the two, two litre gross pots. You might think they're a bit big for a sweet corn, but they uh, believe you me. Um, sweet corns are greedy, they love plenty of them, um, plenty of feeding. So I like to keep mine nice and rich. See, my compost is my own compost. Um, it's, it's well drained. And all I have to do now is, to, is a handful of the same compost, but it's a little bit damp, not too wet, and just uh, cover over the holes. And that's all I do with my sweet corn. 
but never, never water above over the top of them. Because I find once you do that, your water soaking down on top of your seed, and you've got more chance of your seed rotting off. So if you just follow them a few guides, you should get an easy and even germination. So that's my first trade done, have incredible. I've got a few more to do, but they will sit in the tree, they'll sit in the melon house. With, uh, with a plastic cover over the top. And that's it, until the, until the break surface. They'll not get no more water, they'll just sit like that, and then once they start breaking the surface, once again, my trees have water from underneath, and now water from above, which we call water from underneath, plenty of water, let it soak it up, and then take the trees out and just stand them on the shelf, and they'll run through. My main ones I'll put in in the fortnight's time, uh, Dean, as I say, these are the peach and cream. Now we're hoping these are going to be a tall one, a tall variety. Um, you can get some small ones, but I haven't read the back of the packet yet, so um, I'm hoping I'm hoping they're going to be a nice tall one. Uh, the incredible mine can grow. I can put mine in the tunnel and they can touch the top of the tunnel roof. So that's eight, nine, ten foot, some of them. So if you're going to get a good pea to go with that, as I've said, there's a couple of lads online, don't use a, don't use a dwarf pea. Uh, if, you've got a, if you've got six foot of cane on your sweet corn, then you want six foot of pea. So you've got six foot of pea pods all the way down on that sweet corn. Um, so I like to use a pea alderman. That's a good six foot variety. So that's going to shoot away up that sweet corn. As I say earlier on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sow them uh, in a fortnight to three weeks before they're ready to plant out. I'll plant my pea in the small pots. And so when I do come to plant the, um, the sweet corn into the beds, I'll have some nice pea pods growing away through in the small pots to plant alongside them and they can start wrapping away around the corn straight away. And the week before that, I'll sow me whatever I'm putting in, either me melons, courgettes, whatever you want to fancy, whatever, you, whatever your fancy is. I'm going to try some watermelons on one side. I've got some giant marrows, um, but I want to try and keep the small ones. I don't, I don't, I don't try putting big stuff there, like they like, say the giant ones. Then they'll just go in the, in the cold frames there, the giant marrows. Um, what I will sow is some, uh, some sweet watermelon. And uh, I've got some pumpkin seed that I saved from last year, so I'm going to put a few small pumpkins. But I want to grow them about a week before, so they're just a small plant, ready for planting out. Uh, reason being, because if, if you plant them in too early, and the leaves take over, and you'll find your pigs are struggling to get through. Because once you plant your, your marrows, or squashes, or anything, into your nice rich beds, they just gallop away. The leaves are away, uh, if you don't restrict them. Which is what you, which is what we do want. We want them to cover the, the whole beds, uh, keep them nice and cool, weed free, and then. But you say once the sweet corn and the peas are up above that canopy, you've got no worry. So uh, if you want to follow us week by week, I'll uh, I'll show you how I'm going on with that. Um, as I say tonight, I'm going to finish the last of these sweet corn off. I'll put them away for next week, and then when I start the next video off. I'll do exactly the same with the, excuse me, with the peaches and cream. We'll get stuck into the peaches and cream, and uh, I might end up sowing them. Depends on how big a variety they grow. I think I'll go online and have a look and just just there, uh, see if I can get some uh, some info on them. If they're a big strong grower, I might just sow them in single pots, and um, just in a small couple do. But uh, like I say, I like to sow my multi cells. Once they come through, I don't mind potting on. Um, I think it's one of the jobs of gardening that I love, and I don't mind, don't mind how many times I've got to pot plants on, you know, I'll keep potting on, potting on, exactly the same with my tomatoes. Tomatoes in there, they're up like that now, they're beautiful. The ones down home, I've got four in big pots, and they're up like that, the four Spanish ones. They're grown great, and they've just been cool greenhouse, no special heat, not too hot, and uh, the ones in there are grown smashing, just nice and cool. So I think I'll start, I'll look at them next week. Once I get all this bad weather out of the way, and I stop, I stop using the cloches. Like you see, I go into the tomatoes tonight, and I'll put a cloche on, on each one. 
I've got about six trays in there with tomatoes. And all I'll do is I'll just stick a cloche on top of each one. And it just gives it a little added protection of an evening, that's all. I don't want to cosset them. I don't want to um, get them too comfortable. I just want them growing nice and slow and strong. If you do find that a stretch in a bit, like a couple of on my Facebook page have been shown, put them up near the leg. I always like to get mine up on the top shelf, as, as near as you can at the top. And that stops them from stretching. If you think they are getting a bit too long, then by all means pot them off. And pot them off that little bit deeper than what you took them out of the compost. You can use a cup. What I like to do is half fill a cup of compost, drop the ceiling in, and then just compost around it. Just below the ceiling leaves. And you'll find that they'll, they'll get a root in that. Water from underneath, not from above, water from underneath. And your tomato will gallop away. But uh, that's my sweet corn in anyway. So, another job out of the way. Daily as next week, so I'll, uh, I've got the last of my croissant cuttings to take. I'm still potting them off. Um, so the next video will get st stuck into the daily as. I've got my, um, I've got my parsnips to sow and my carrots to sow. I'll put off sowing them this week because of the weather being that bad. Hopefully next week we're going to get a bit of a break in the weather. So I might try, I might attempt to put the parsnips in then. But the de definite, I'll start in the daily as. So we'll start to take some daily cuttings. Get them sorted, and I've still got a few seeds to sow um, up the top end. Sunflowers, I've got some sunflowers to sow, and uh, lo and behold, large sunflowers. Now I'm sure I've got them off Dean, off Dean's us the plot. Now uh, I'm going to be potting them in tomorrow, but I've got the uh, I've got the sunflower lemon queen, and I've got the brown ones, uh, the, the ginger ones also. So I'll be, I'll be sowing them plenty of time, April. Uh, for sunflowers, as I say, they grow that strong and that quick. Um, I'll not be putting them in for a while. But what I will be doing next week is I'll, I'll start in the, start in the cucurbits, which to everybody it's, uh, it's your squashes, your cucumbers, courgettes, and I'll start sowing mine around about the second week in April. I'm quite happy with that because, as I say, I don't like to plant anything out until the middle, the end of May, up here in the northeast. Even in a cold polytunnel, I like the plants grow nice and strong before I even attempt to put them anywhere near the pots or into the raised beds. So, yep. So, the next video, as I say, we'll get cracking on with the dahlias. We'll take dahlia cuttings and we'll start on the cucubits. But, uh, what I will do is I'll get these peaches and cream sown in a week's time, Dean. That'll be on the next video. And uh, we'll probably be doing it just exactly the same as the way I've done here. By then, hopefully, these will be popping through in a week's time. Just starting to show yourself. But, as I say, if you're putting sweet corn in, one of my best tips is never water above, from above, or cold water. Make sure your water is nice and warm. Make sure your, your, your compost is free draining. Put your holes in, soak it prior to putting the seeds in. And that way, you find you don't, your seeds don't rot off. A lot of people like that will put seeds in and then just take a water can at the top of them and soak them. Don't know. That way you're going to lose your seed. So, if you follow that tip, you should be okay. Right, so I'm going to... Get this video online tonight, hopefully. I know it's been a few weeks since I made the one, but uh, as I say as prior, I've been really busy the last couple of weeks. Doctor's appointments, hospital appointments, um, one thing and another, family and friends turning up. But yeah, here ho, we're well, well, back to square one again. Me and Roger have been on the plot uh, most of the time for the last week, trying to get the pathways sorted out. We're doing a little bit of um, shifting paving around, and he's doing a little bit of plastering, and that's in between trying to get the garden sorted out. But uh, we'll get there. But um, thanks for all the new subscribers. There's quite a few coming online. Uh, the last week, I've been uh, 540, I think, last count. Well, chuffed for that. Um, if you if you can't wait for the videos, get yourself over to our Facebook page. It's uh, Jeff Foreman on the plot. Um, send me a request, and we'll get you on there. Or on most nights, um, talking to people, sharing ideas, pictures. So, you know. Get yourself on our Facebook page if you don't, if you can't wait for the videos. Hopefully next week, or from the next couple of months, I'll be doing a video every week. That's, us um, get myself turned round again. I think, well, I'm getting over the most, the, the, the worst of the planting. It's just potting off now. Once I get the potting off finished, I'll be over the moon. Get the last of the food seeds sown, and then we can get outside in the garden. I'll take you out there, and we'll start sowing some crops outside. Okay, so, for the time being, thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. And thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you all again soon. Okay, thanks again.